uh, was done by MIT and uh, the University of Minnesota. And they looked over 30,000 pay records. And what they found from that study is that a lot of times people of color, women and black men, were labeled as high performers, but in ratio, they were promoted significantly less. Tabitha, there's generic advice that black people get regarding careers. That's online, in blogs, and various other fora. Uh, I want you to please describe to us what this generic advice sounds like and maybe tell us how you feel on how this has worked or not worked for black men overall. Tabitha. Uh, audio. Oh, yeah, good question. I think I'm going to start by saying that the strategies that we have been applying and black men have been applying have not been working. And I think that the reason they've not been working, if I can give you a couple of reasons, is the first one, you talked about the statistics of black men, right, in leadership positions. But let's also look at this, uh, the percentage of black men on boards, right? So as of 2020, we only had about 3.3% of board seats occupied by black men. Then I wanted to share another really interesting one. In 2020, because, you know, we often talk about the gender pay gap, but we often do not talk about the racial pay gap. Does any of you know what, the, uh, what uh, black men earn in comparison to white men for the same jobs? Is it, uh, let, me, let, me, let me try to make a guess on this. I've seen it before, but is it around 70, 71%? Yeah, 69 cents to every dollar. Okay. Right, and this is out of uh, the Economic Policy Institute in 2020. And this is doing the same job? Higher. Doing the same job. Okay, so higher. Does, right? that, does that mean average. I need to And you know that's actually someone. a really interesting one because I'll tell you this, right? I meet people who say, it's not possible that I'm earning less because my company has pay structures and when mm -hmm. HR calls me to offer me a job, they tell me that this is the range or they tell me that this is the, uh, the flat uh, the, the, the rate that they pay. But the reality is oftentimes, because I've been in HR for a few years, oftentimes what happens is that HR will offer you a percentage of what they can offer and expect you to negotiate, right? So if you're being offered 70% of what they can offer and you accept it or you negotiate from, uh, from 70% to 80%, the reality is that you're leaving that extra 20% on the table. So that's another sign that things are not working because black men are still earning 69 cents to every dollar that white men are earning. Another one that I really want to talk about uh, that tells us that, uh, that black men are not is the promotion gap. There is a promotion gap for men. There was a study that was done by MIT and uh, the University of Minnesota. And they looked over 30,000 pay records. And what they found from that study is that a lot of times people of color, women and black men, were labeled as high performers, but in ratio, they were promoted significantly less, right, than, than white men who were rated as average or high performers. So wow. all these things are things that tell me that, gosh, guys, we've got a problem. Wow. Now, these are things that uh, your average person, you know, just working hard uh, and checking the boxes and doing what they're supposed to do, doesn't know. Uh, these are things that they, they I mean, like uh, some of this I'm hearing, I mean, I knew about that pay gap. And, you know, like when pay gap is talked about sometimes in media, it's not, you know, like actually contextualized. Like when you talk about 69%, it means that uh, if if you're getting paid $69,000 a year, there's uh, a white boy somewhere, or let me say a white guy, a white man somewhere, who's getting paid for the same job, same experience, same everything, who's getting paid $100,000 for the exact, same, uh, the exact same job. Is that correct? Yeah, 69 cents to the dollar. Okay, yeah, and and that's that's quite uh, that's quite amazing. You know, I want to bring this on set 
we have like you said earlier we have a couple of men on set we also have a woman on set and we have um guests uh, in the studio uh i'm gonna give them uh, an opportunity to maybe just introduce themselves uh they are from kenya you know they they still have the kenyan dust they're fresh from kenya so we, we, we it will be nice to also hear from their perspective and their side on their thoughts uh about this let's we're gonna start with the lady and then we're gonna come to the gentleman all right hello uh i'm sylvia i'm a guest of moturi uh we just found ourselves uh, who's moturi by the way hold on Humpo, humphrey one <laughs> yeah. mic yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that other even, name is even humphrey here. we don't know yeah. <laughs> who is humphrey <laughs> who is oh humphrey gosh, yeah, mm. yeah. Oh. I, i take care many who that <laughs> Yes, Motori. as as, as uh, has been said, we just we're just here visiting from Kenya, um, and we came to visit the show today. Um, and yeah, very happy to be here, and really excited about the topic. And yeah, okay. it's very very interesting. So far, from what you've heard, uh, what Tabitha has said, what is it that has caught your attention? Um, the well, the the sixty nine cents to a dollar thing. I think I I knew. I, I think it was in the back of my head. But then the idea that. Um, that you have to negotiate for the rest of the 20% is is a tough one that's to 31% na- to navigate yeah it's, yeah. it's a, a bit of a hard one because you don't in for me like as a as a woman i I'm, i'm very much this humble person and you know i take what I, what i'm given and if i negotiate i'll negotiate just an extra 10% mm. uh, but also you don't want to out negotiate yourself out of a job like oh, okay that's All the right. idea I usually think about like I, you don't want to you, you, you have be too expensive over, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah and jerry pay attention to that out negotiate yourself out of a job you're gonna you know like Addre- maybe address, address that. that yeah yeah how uh, how do you negotiate in a clever way that yes so you get you you get your full worth of your full 100% but then you're not you're not seen as a, a pricey job candidate ah uh, okay yeah. all right uh let's go to our other guest in the studio uh please introduce yourself no so you got a mic I think it's shy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um and Jerry and I are visiting from Nairobi so we are also guests of Moturi. Thank you one Mike, uh, thanks for having us. Um it's actually my first time uh on red- radio. Ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> so v- yeah, visual I, radio. Yeah, visual radio, yeah, ah, okay. exactly. Everything else. Also. Okay. So well, Yeah, I mean on the topic it's something uh, I can relate uh, quite well to uh, I've been in corporate jobs uh, in Kenya for quite a while still doing them as we speak. Um <clears throat> so different perspectives one what Jerry has talked about or Sylvia is um especially back home in Kenya it, it's it's uh, unlike the states Kenya is a very you could call it an employers market so the leverage sits with the employer uh hmm. and so just like she said that aspect of there are three four other potential candidates for the same role and you have a fear that if I'm too unaffordable uh you know that offer will be given to someone else and often times you know in these roles too the difference between the top two three candidates is is not big and so in, any of us could get the job so you tend to fear that if, if i'm too uh tough with my requirements then you know the offer will go to the next guy and sometimes uh, you know we see it happen because you know that you have insiders when you're getting a job and so you ask around hey, what's going on and you hear they're talking to other people so i think one one insight that would be important uh, and i'm not sure it's the same circumstances in the us things could be different here more jobs may be available and so you know if you have the qualifications and people really want you they'll give you what you want but in back home it's a bit different so maybe injury you could speak a bit more around uh, how one can uh, you know in navigate uh, this negotiation to get what the maxim everything that's on the table as okay. close possible to, to what's on the table all right very very interesting questions coming in from our guests and uh this is a different perspective you know like coming from kenya and even judy here who's uh, uh on facebook saying out negotiating ourselves is 
is a real concern. And I know this uh, the the aspect of negotiation is one of those aspects that Njeri has really been drilling in for a very long time. But also, let's not forget, I think it's important to understand what uh, Kim has raised, that the corporate world in Kenya, it's an employer's market. It's an employer's market. So that in itself, mm-hmm. I mean, you probably... It brings a different brings dynamic. Brings a different dynamic. But okay. maybe, maybe, uh, maybe when Jerry can chime on to that, I don't know if uh, Omosha over there has anything to say. Yes, uh, Omosha. Uh, Yanni, you know, I, I'm playing back what Jerry has just said. And uh, I got a job, what, a year ago? A year and some change ago. Umechezo. Hmm? Boss, wewe. Si ungachatu angalao, even oh, I said by myself. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm with this guy. <laughs> So I did negotiate. Yes. And um, I still felt that I didn't get in enough. Yeah. But then, you know, there's this aspect now of 100% remote. Yeah. So from my perspective, nili pigaizo madafu ni kasema petroli, sijui lunch, sijui... Yeah, okay. Jerry just just in the lab because he, he audience no, 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 are no, very no, no, but, finish, but you finish, see I mean it, it, it's a yes, tough crowd it's finish, a tough finish. crowd finish. but going by in Jerry's numbers correct if if you are offered let's say 140k for a job correct it means there's a white boy somewhere who's, who's making getting, 200 yes who's making another 30 percent no, right? and 30 percent is 60 yes. that's 200,000 yes. that's a 60,000 dollar pay correct. difference correct yeah that's so uh these numbers like the 69 cents to the dollar yo madafu yangu haiko imeingia hapo madafu yangu ilikuwa imeingia pali na save hapa kwa petroli sijui tires sijui i don't know what <laughs> eh, oil change yeah. eh 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 hizo kuka kwa traffic for 2 hours <laughs> one way yeah. sijui i don't know yeah hizo, kahawa starbucks eh, yes yes hizo zote hapo zile sandwich riri Boss, I'm telling you, Yani, yeah. where Mika, Ebu Kauko Pande Usionge. Now, meanwhile, you know, I negotiated, but by the time I was even negotiating on this particular job, I had, I, I was actually still taking a pay cut because the job that I had before, I was, was making more, was paying more, but okay. I was commuting and I was commuting every day. So when I, you know, when I pick out all of these madafus and I come back and you look at certain other things like what are you getting for your uh, uh, for sick pay? What are you getting for uh, your, your annual leave? You know, what's, what do you get for your annual leave? Some jobs have um, unlimited uh, PTO, you know, some have unlimited uh, sick time, you know. So when you calculate all of those things, maybe, you know, because those also equate to money. Your benefits, you know, like like your medical benefits, you know, uh, mentors, do you, I don't know, you know, uh, things like disability, you know, whether they'll even pay you during this, uh, you know, a percentage of salary for disability if you're out for long term, short term, or whatever the case may be, because some employers don't do that, even though they'll keep the job for you, you know. So those are things to, of course, consider. But at the end of the day, eh, Mika Nyeulisema, right?